Hello everybody, Brian Nunez, the brand manager for Losi here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about installing the new TLR tune shocks on either your Mini B or also your Mini T. Now, these TLR tune shocks do offer quite a bit of improved performance and durability compared to the stock ones. One of the key things with aluminum versus composite is that the way that they're machined, it's much smoother of a body. So the piston as it travels through there is much smoother, giving you a much more consistent feel on the track. Again, it's outfitted with a nice aluminum collet as well, but a key feature is also the bleed screw. You don't have this in a stock shock. This bleed screw lets you get the perfect amount of oil in there so you have very little to zero air, and again, improves the shock consistency. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start and get these installed. To start off, the process is actually pretty simple. We're gonna go ahead and remove the top shock nuts using a four millimeter. And it's also probably handy to have one of these just in case. But you simply just install this and we'll back that nut out. So go ahead and remove this nut. Set that aside as well. And then your shocks will just slide out and move those to a side. And then there is a shock bushing you're gonna wanna kind of keep in mind of. You don't need to take them off, but just make sure they don't come off with the shock or you don't drop it. One cool thing to mention is you might notice this carbon fiber shock tower is another TLR tuned option part. Be sure to check out our LOSI YouTube channel or the LOSI.com to find details on that. So now that the tops are off, we'll flip the car over and it's time to remove these two screws here for the bottom of the shock. I'll place the car this way, one and a half millimeter. We'll start on this side. Now, as I'm taking this off, I'll also mention more features and benefits about just our shocks in general. Shocks are tunable, and they're tunable in four different ways. One is, again, that collet and how tightened that is will adjust your ride height. The springs are also adjustable. The piston can be kind of altered or cut or grooved to give you more flow, or you can also use regular CA or tire glue to clog up the holes and give you less flow, change the dampening. And lastly, kind of the most common way to kind of tune your shocks is with the shock oil. TLR offers a wide range of shock oils ranging from, I believe 15 to 100 weight for any type of track surface. So those screws are off. We'll flip this back around and these should just pop right off like so. So one thing you notice, this pivot ball does move. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you kind of line that up there and insert that into the arm. It does take a little bit of finessing to get in there. Let's see if I can show it in the camera. If not, I apologize, but when you buy your shocks, you'll see what we mean. There you go. So now you can see that that's in there and then you can kind of flip that around and line up that screw with that hole. Now the car automatically comes with two different shock positions and the stock tower has two different shock positions up top. The carbon fiber tower shown here has four. In general, laying down the shock or putting more angle in the shock is better for turning or tracks with a lot of turns and the shock being more straight up or up and down is better for tracks that have more harsher landings or bigger jumps. So there's that side, flip the car over, and we'll start working on the other side. Looks like I gotta push this over just a hair, just like that. So we'll insert that there. And if you go slowly, that ball should kind of naturally line itself up. There it goes. All right. Now we can flip the car over and work our way back to the top. 
Now, one thing to note is that you're gonna to want to have these bleeder screws facing out. So we'll kind of flex the front wing there. Same thing. If you're interested in that front wing, check out losi.com or the YouTube channel. For more details, that is another TLR tuned option part there. Now that those are in, it's time to install the top nuts. Now one key thing to note here is you don't wanna crank these down too much. You really just want to get the thread to engage into that nylock nut. This needs about another half a turn. And the reason is if you clamp those down, you'll mushroom the actual bushing and you'll cause interference on the shock. Now these parts here will also break in. So as you go around the track, give it a battery pack or two, not only to break in the springs, the oil, but especially those bushings you need to break themselves in and wear themselves in against the aluminum in order to give you the full effect. So there you go. There's the front shocks. Let's move on to the rear. Set, we'll start from the bottom side. And we'll go ahead and remove the bottom shock screw. There is a washer on this side, again, to kind of protect that rod end and the ball coming apart. So make sure you don't lose that little bit. Hop over to the other side. We'll move over to the top side. Top side is just as easy, grabbing your formula and taking off that nut. Old shock compared to the new. I would also like to mention that both the front shocks and the rear shocks already come pre-filled with oil for you. So you're not gonna need that right out of the gate. However, it might be nice to pick up some different weight oils, maybe 30 to 40 weight, 30 or 35 weight to give you some tuning options. We'll set apart the stock ones out back and we'll start working on installing the rear. We can start on the top side, again, making sure that the bleeder screw is facing out. We'll make it a little bit easier to service later if you need to. Grab our nut driver, nuts already in there, and go ahead and screw these on. Again, making sure to not over tighten this. You really just need to, excuse me, make sure that the thread is poking out the side of the nut there. This one could afford to go just about another half a turn in, just like so. Moving on to the other side. Like so. Grab our nut. Peel this away. Could afford to go in by another half a turn or so. There we go, perfect. Now we'll turn our car over. Now it should be pretty easy to line up that screw with those holes. The stock position is on the outside, so we'll just go back to the stock position. And again, key thing is to not forget that washer. That washer is there in case that rod end wants to pop away from the ball itself. Grab our next screw with the appropriate washer. Put that into the ball and the rod end. And then put that on the outside hole. And there you have it. That's your front and rear shocks. As you can tell, the rear end is riding very high. That's exactly what these spring collars are for. You could turn these back, puts less tension on the spring, and will lower the ride height. Ideally, a good baseline for your shocks and your ride height is the arms to be level. Um, some people like to run the actual bones uh, level as well. Somewhere around that mark is a good starting point. So now that we adjusted those, 
You can see that it's definitely much lower. Could afford to go less. Let's keep loosening the tension on the spring itself. And again, since these are brand new, they do have a little bit more spring in them than they would. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to run that a few packs before you make any final adjustments. So there you go. Car's looking good. If you're interested in any of the other option parts we offer for the Mini T or the Mini B, be sure to jump on LoSi.com and then our LoSi YouTube channel for the instructions on how to install them. Thanks guys, we'll see you in the next one.